G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Service Rifle, but not like any other Service Rifle you've seen before. You see, this weapon was developed for the Fallout New Vegas in Fallout 4 mod, and as such, it is extremely high quality, lots of customization options, and we'll get right into it. So first of all, we've got the trigger mechanism and not the receiver, and this is important because this is like your primary way of um, its fire mode and how much damage it's going to do. So for the best damage, we're going to make this an automatic weapon, so we'll have the powerful automatic trigger mechanism there, and we'll move on. Now for the barrels, there's a whole heap of barrels here, including some makeshift ones if you want to roll players like a raider, can't like, access all of the good weapon mods there, but you've also got the wooden mods like you'd see in Fallout New Vegas with the regular service rifle, including short and long variants. Combat barrels are more like your marksman car, I mean your assault carbines that you'd find in Fallout New Vegas, which um, I'm pretty sure this uh, weapon will override the um, assault carbine simply because you can make this automatic and fast firing. And you can actually get machine gun barrel there, which contains a usable foregrip. Your um, character will grip onto that foregrip, which is very nice. And a sniper barrel for your sniping operations. We'll go for, you know what, we'll go for a machine gun barrel there. We'll make this one perfect for automatic fire. Now for the stock, you've got a whole heap of stocks here. Um, there's also some more makeshift ones here. Combat stocks look more like your assault carbines. And the full stock would be more suited to your basic... Um, you know, service rifles back in New Vegas. But the uh, sniper stock there seems to have the best recoil reduction, plus it's got a little bit of a cheek rest there, which is awesome. Although, this one looks a little bit more suited to a non-sniper weapon, and that's actually a cool looking stock, so yeah, we'll chuck that on. Now for the magazine, you can go all the way up from a small magazine, which probably has that 20 rounds in it, like you'd find in New Vegas, all the way up to a huge drum with, I think that's a double drum, that is indeed a double drum, so this is going to be like an LMG service rifle, it's going to be great. Now for the sights, you've actually got a little bit of choice here, and I'm not going to attach anything just yet, because we've got a... Um, top receiver here that is actually got the carry handle always attached to it. And I don't really want that there. If I want the carry handle there, I want to be using that as iron sights, so we'll come back to that in a second. As for the muzzles, we're obviously going to go for a suppressor, but you can have a couple of different bayonets, which look very nice, and a muzzle brake and compensator like usual. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting, because we've got the standard lower receiver now, and this is going to control what is highlighted here. You can make that 5mm if you wanted, 9mm, 7.62s from the Nuke World DLC. So if you want a really high power sniper weapon, you can actually have this forge receiver here, except to the AK Mab, so that's actually kind of interesting. But what I want to do is add just an advanced lower receiver there, and that'll actually give us a, um, a little bit more damage, which is great. Now, if we could go back to our upper receiver, that's what it was on for a second. Yeah, for some reason, the attachment points um, seem to swap around with these things, but that's fine. So, yeah, if I wanted to remove that carry handle there for good, you can scroll down and you can see that there's advanced marksman ones, which actually have a tactical rail there, which is great. And there's also ones with a side charge um, prefix onto them, and that'll add a little bit of a thing there for you to pull. And, that, and of course, if you want to scroll through these and read them for yourself, they obviously give you better things. But I want to have a just a regular advanced one. I prefer the receiver, sort of how it is. And again, our attachment point has been shifted around. That's a little bit confusing, but yeah. Okay, so now we've got the optics here. And we can have a carry handle there if we want it using those as iron sights. But we'll go for a nice AO tech there. And that is exactly what we want this weapon to look like there. So yes, there's so much customization to this weapon that I cannot stress how amazingly modular this is. This is absolutely great. All right, we'll go ahead and chuck on some stickers. Oh wait, no, we need to perk for this. That's a shame. There's also no Institute stickers. If I was playing as Captain Bridget right now, I'd be using this sticker. As Matilda, I'd be using that sticker. And as Ella, that one, is there a Brotherhood one? Yes, for Winter, that's a Brotherhood one for her. But yeah, no um, Institute one, which is a little bit of a shame. But you can change the paint job of it. Let's make it a little bit red and flamey. That seems to look nice. And of course, a Legendary effect is there if you need it. But we're getting 158 damage with a fire rate of 113. And a huge mag capacity, I think, will be fine. We'll create a couple of other variants, mainly a Assault Carbine, maybe a standard... Um, service rifle and a sniper variant. We'll take these into Gunners Plaza and see what we can do.
Okay, so here we are at Gunner's Plaza, and I feel like with this weapon we can take them all out. So this is going to be like an LMG type deal. Unfortunately, it looks like the sights are a little bit misaligned, but it's the first release of this thing. There's bound to be a few bugs here and there. Anyways, we'll have a quick look at these things. Actually, no, maybe we'll do that in the light when we get inside, but... Anyways, we'll get stuck into some of these gunners right now. We'll just get to ourselves in a nice advantageous position. And then we'll start murdering these guys. And with the aid of the suppressor and our automatic fire, as well as all of the um, snake attack criticals we'll be able to do, we can finish off these guys very, very quickly. There's the custom reload animations, by the way. There's actually a lot of them, and they do change depending on which mag you choose, which is great. Now, I'm worried about whether these bloody blood bugs are going to show up and mess up my snake attack criticals again. Again. But as you can tell here, we are absolutely mowing down these guys. And I want to get a good look of this weapon in third person, so we'll have a little bit of that trickery. Very nice. Okay, back to shooting people with our normal end skill. And now we have been detected, so it's time to hit these guys a little bit more in the head so we can actually get an get some good damage on these guys. The damage on this thing is actually quite good with all of the um, weapon parts that actually contribute to the high damage of this thing. I'm feeling like this thing is very very well balanced for even very hard mode which is great. Although that may make people feel like this thing is a little bit too overpowered when it comes to actually you've got an irradiated weapon. It'd be useful if I kept you around just to shoot me for free heals, but whatever. But as you can tell, the LMG variant of this thing with its barrel there with the foregrip, it seems to be working very well against these guys, and there's absolutely no recoil to speak of, which makes a weapon... You know, it's a lot easier to use a weapon that doesn't fight you, you don't have to fight for control over this thing, although it does make the skill a little bit less than what it should be. I reckon that some recoil is good, but not too much, you know? <clears throat> Moving on there, we'll whip out our sniper one for a second. We've got a short scope on this, and the 7.62 receiver with that little um, charging handle thingy on the side. I feel like that's a nice little addition to a 7.62 um, converted receiver there, because you get that little bit of a side charging handle. Granted, it's on the wrong side, then yeah, sort of AK weapons. As you can tell, the reload animations don't look quite as good, but they still work for what they are. And of course, this thing is compatible with the sniper perk when we're shooting these guys like that. And for some reason, as soon as I went and crouched, that gunner decided to just dump a whole mag on me there. That was very rude of them. And we'll go ahead and try to figure out where the rest of these guys are, although it's not going to be too hard since they're on the bloody compass. But I can't really see right, very well right now. I've got my brightness all the way up. Maybe it's the angle of the screen that I'm looking at. Never mind. Okay, so we're back into caution. Probably not for very long, but we'll use this thing just to snipe them and take them down very easy. Nice diffusing of the threat, so we don't have to worry about getting shot from these guys. And what are they shooting at? I wonder if they're going to hit you through the wall. I actually can. That's interesting. And I believe there is someone right next to me. There you are. Okay, you can die. Alright, so you've seen a whole of a lot of the sniper version and the LMG version, so let's just go loud and proud with the classic versions. This is the 5mm converted um, assault carbine, and as you can tell the rate of fire is exceptionally high on this thing, and I've made sure there's not a suppressor this time so you get a chance to hear what this thing sounds like unsuppressed. Currently we're losing the DPS war to that gunner with the um, gorse rifle there, but we managed to take out with a little bit of help from Nerd Rage. And you know what, let's go ahead and shoot this bloody blood bug and bats if I can just zero in on his torso, I like shooting him there. That generally gets you the best chance. And with the damage of this thing, which isn't as great as our LMG 556 shooting one, we can still do a really good job against these gunners. And now that we're picking off these guys a little bit longer ranges, we might be able to get away with using a service rifle here with the wooden stock and uh, barrel there, but maybe not. I feel like using an automatic weapon is very beneficial to us right now. So we'll just take out you in the head because you got the drop on me. I'm going to miss Vats in Fallout 76. I'll actually have to aim at people now rather than letting the computer do it for me. I don't think I'll be doing very well in PvP at all, but... We'll switch back into crouchy mode and go to the LMG room clearing device and quickly lock pick this is a very easy lock and knock these people down like that. 
A lot of bullets going around, but none of them are going into me, thankfully. And we can finish off those guys very, very easily indeed with a little bit of sustained fire. Thank you, drum mag. Okay, let's get out our... Oh, there's one. Right there. Don't miss him. Got to keep on hitting him. Okay, looks like with the iron sights on this thing, with its semi-auto mode, you can actually still use sniper, which is actually kind of good. It's kind of like the regular assault rifle in the vanilla game, even though you've still got the sights equipped on it, you can actually use a thing as sniper though, but I'm going to have to actually play conservatively here, simply because we don't have a lot of health to um, spare. That's just a basic gunner, however, an elusive basic gunner, but we got him. So with the 20 round mag of what this thing would be like in New Vegas, it suffers a little bit, but we should be fine. Just got to take out a couple more. I think that one's way below us. Yep, okay, we've got the high ground on these guys. It's just a matter of uh, drawing them out. All right, that's just a brigadier there. They'll do a lot of damage to us, so we'll just take them out a little bit like that. Ah, mysterious stranger comes out. There we go. Sometimes he likes to leave the shot to the last second when you think he's going to do absolutely nothing and waste your time. But yeah, he made it, which is great. Also, I missed two gunners over there. That's brilliant. Anyways, we'll keep on batsing our way to victory here. They're a little bit too far away to maybe hit reliably with iron sights. Maybe if we go into third person and deal with them there. Also, I think I leveled up because I got all my health back. So no point on playing conservatively now, is there? Okay, we'll switch over to our Assault Carbine variant, because why the hell not? And we'll track down the last couple of gunners that I somehow missed and kill them. So yeah, pretty happy with this weapon so far, actually. Um, this is a huge cut above the uh, Assault Carbine mods that I've experienced in the past there. And yes, this is going to be a very, very good addition to the full uh, New Vegas in 4 mod, which hopefully at some point doesn't get taken down like Fallout 3, the Fallout 3 version did. But yeah, everything's looking real promising so far. I enjoyed using the weapons that have been uh, released so far. I know there's an anti-material rifle on the way, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing how that one stacks up against the paid um, uh, anti-material rifle creation club mod, which, yeah, that actually might be a worthy, um, you know, fix for it or, or worthy... Um, replacement if you haven't got the coin or don't want to give Bethesda money for their blatant mod chilling, but we'll see. We'll get into Gunners Plaza and we'll clear them out. Righto, in Gunners Plaza. Now we're going to have a look at these in uh, first person while we slowly heal up. Or third person, sorry. So unfortunately, you don't grab the foregrip in third person there, but the animations line up pretty well there. That's what the LMG variant of this weapon looks like. Inverted commas there. Come on, I'm not that stupid. But yeah, there we go. There's what the sniper one looks like with the 7.62 receive with that AK mag looking thing there. Interesting looking weapon, very cobbled together, nice and full ID. And then we go to, over to the assault carbine, which basically looks like an M4 carbine, but yeah, it fires the smaller 5.5 five, uh, five millimeter bullets, which um use the same size mag, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And last but not least, the service rifle and the reloads, of course, are there in third person too so yes a very good weapon mod i highly recommend this to anyone i'm gonna start talking about fallout 76 now because why the hell not and i was talking about creation club before oh we actually nailed that person pretty quickly but yeah and um i was thinking that basically yeah there are going to be mods at some point that's something that todd howard has confirmed that that actually led me to pre-ordering that because without mods um there's not going to be a lot to keep the game running you know, past its regular, you know, lifetime. Although, since it's an online game that gets updates ever-changingly and, you know, it proceeds forward, kind of like uh, the whole GDA thing, how that thing's got a lifespan of infinity as long as Rockstar keeps updating it, then yeah, um, the lifetime of the game probably won't mean a whole lot, but it's nice that we'll be able to modify the game to our own liking with um, oh, hang on, we can't shoot that guy for some reason. Maybe it's just my aim is off. But yes, it's nice that we can make our own personal modifications. Now, what I'm wondering is whether they'll um, handle it like they did with the other creation engine games. Oh, look at you. Just threw him to the ground. Threw him to the ground with that sniper knockdown there. Very nice. Okay, so we're making good use out of the regular service rifle here. And even if you want to keep this thing as pure as you'd like to the new Vegas variant, you can actually still wreck face with it, which is very good. You just need to put all the advanced um, things on it, which is great. Not even having to cheese with a suppressor here, so that's good. The rate of fire boost actually helps a lot too. And I can probably even boost this thing's 
uh, you know, power a little bit more. Oh, also I threw that one to the ground again. Sniper Knockdown is very, very aggressive today, apparently. Yeah, so I'm um, back to the topic at hand. I forgot where I was talking about, but going back to the Creation Club thing, I reckon that's going to actually be a big part of the whole thing. We might actually see a few of the weapons that aren't present at launch come in through the Creation Club, and hopefully they're balanced properly, because if they're not viable and we can't mod them to make them viable, down you go, Bridget, is that, um, yeah, they're going to be a completely useless waste of money, which would kind of suck, because <laughs> a lot of my viewership comes from me um, checking out some of the Creation Club things, so, uh, yeah, maybe if I can't fix them right away and I can only say bad things about them, maybe it's not going to be the same. But, yeah, I'm not even sure how that's going to work, because I still want to look at weapons and see how that uh, pans out in Fallout 76, but... Yeah, until I find a good place to test them, like Gunners Plaza or somewhere where I've, as you know, there's a bit of combat variety, I suppose, but I guess the map's going to be four times the size, so yeah, um, maybe that would work, but yeah, there's, yeah, that's what I want to do. Trouble is that it may be a little bit oversaturated at first and may not be able to even get the, um, my foot through the door when it comes to Fallout 76 content because everyone will be watching the bigger channels because obviously they're more trusted and reputable sources because I'm only just a little tiny channel, not even, I think I've just hit over 2.5k, so yeah. And a lot of people will be coming my way to Fallout 76, but I feel like I'll be able to get some good content out of that. And hopefully, if it plays out right, we can even play with um, some of the subscribers during streams. I feel like that's an excellent way to actually, you know, interact with the community. I've been rambling this whole time, but hopefully you've um, taken into account how devastatingly powerful this thing is, even when you're not cheesing with a suppressor all the time. So, yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. Service rifle made by Deadpool, Hack, Shiny Haxorus, all those blokes. Yeah, they've, they've done it again, boys. We'll move on to something else. Okay, so there's a giant Mylurk over silhouetted in the distance there. We'll get stuck into him and see how fast we can kill him. Seem to be going pretty well so far with constant sneak attack criticals. And the rate of fire is keeping this Mylurk nice and staggered there. I think he's mutated at this point. He indeed has. And we'll continue to hit him with all of the sneak attack criticals until he's close enough where we need to start using a weapon that would uh, knock him down with the sniper perk rather than just hit, keep on hitting him with sneak attack criticals. But that time will be now actually. So there we go. We'll hit him with our service rifle here. And now that he's knocked down, we are free to just keep on shooting at him until he, you know, dies. If we can knock him down in the water and he's taken by currents, hopefully that can push him to a point where he's completely immobile, but I think the current is actually drawing him right into the beach there, so he gets up whenever he touches the land there, which is a shame, but we'll switch over to our sniper one, I mean our LMG one, just to get more damage from an automatic platform as he's ragdolling around there and has decided not to get up this time, so maybe the current took him for a little bit more than I was expecting, but you know what, I think it's time to use this thing as a 5mm little Submachine gun? Would it be submachine gun? Because it's not firing rifle rounds, is it? And we'll just keep on shooting him in the head because this thing is very, very good in bats as well. Very, very um, efficient with the action points, which is kind of strange because, yeah, usually this thing in its Fallout New Vegas game, it ate up those action points pretty quickly simply because rifles did back in that game. Also, there's a custom bash animation. You don't actually grunt every time you um, hit it, so, uh, yeah, that's a cool change I suppose but if you're in third person it'll be the standard um, bash animation and the grunt every time but that's interesting so I think I've vouched for this weapon long enough you've seen me play for it for long enough and if you like this thing already you've probably already gone down to the description and went to download it I highly recommend this mod if you haven't told if you haven't been able to tell that already so if you'd like to see this thing in your game link in the description and it is on PC now but um, these guys usually port their stuff onto Xbox One at some point there, so I believe we'll be able to see this thing on consoles very, very soon indeed. Thank you very much for watching, guys.